welcome to the online course Advanced Thermodynamics. Myself Nandakishore, I am a professor of chemical engineering department IIT Guwahati. This is the introduction video of the course. What we understand in uh, basic uh, UG level thermodynamics course that we study relations between states of a system that undergo certain kind of processes. That is what we study in basic UG level thermodynamics course where we apply the principles of thermodynamics to both reversible and irreversible uh, processes to get informations such as you know what is the power requirement or power obtained, what is the amount of heat absorbed or dissipated, what is the value of an unknown property such as temperature of the final stage or uh, initial state etc. Those kind of things we have seen uh, you know uh, in our uh, UG level thermodynamics course in general. Right. So, what we are going to do in this course? In this course we are going to apply the principles of thermodynamics to obtain composition of a mixture when it attains equilibrium between coexisting phases especially when these phases are you know behaving a kind of non-ideal or that is especially when these phases are non-ideal and then mixtures are multi-component mixtures. So, that is what we are going to see. That is when two or more phases are coexisting and there exist an equilibrium amongst those phases then what is the equilibrium composition or of those phases those kind of thing we are going to study in this particular lecture. That is in this course we apply the principles of thermodynamics to obtain compositions of a mixture when it attains equilibrium between coexisting phases especially when these phases are non-ideal and then mixtures are multi-component mixtures that is what we are going to study in general in this particular course. So, why uh, should we study this phase equilibrium problems especially being a chemical engineering grad that is uh, very much essential to know because in general chemical engineering deals with the species chemically react to form a desired product then product separation from other byproducts and are from unreacted reactants that is what in general takes place in chemical engineering. So, there is a tremendous amount of uh, you know process involved where separation is also taking place. That is generally separation methods involve contact or formation of different phases through which one species of a mixture preferentially segregates. Then further industries should also follow pollution board regulations thus cleaning contaminated environments also requires a separation methodology. So, because this chemical engineering point of view as well as from the cleaning environmental uh, contaminants etc from those point of view also we need to have a kind of a system so that to study the uh, transfer of species from one phase to the other phase. Okay? So, that is it is important to estimate the degree to which species transfer into a different phase as function of processing condition becomes a kind of very much essential for chemical engineering students. So, what is the phase equilibrium? Phase equilibrium can be defined as follows transfer of species occur because when two phases are brought into contact they tend to exchange their constituents until the composition of each phase attains a constant value and this state is known as a kind of equilibrium state. Okay? So, in chemical engineering why this equilibrium problems associated with the uh, phase equilibrium why it is important. So, as we already seen in chemical engineering the phase equilibrium problems are very much essential because there are several separation methodologies are involving these phase equilibrium problems. So, in general if you generalize what are those kind of uh, phase equilibrium problems in chemical engineering then we can say in chemical engineering we have a vapor liquid equilibrium VLE, we have a liquid liquid equilibrium LLE, we also have a vapor liquid liquid equilibrium where one vapor and two liquid phases are in equilibrium so that is VLLE and then solid liquid equilibrium and so on. So, often these phase equilibrium situations in general are dealt with an assumption that the phases are uh, ideal and then mixture is a kind of binary mixture. But in general these phases deviate from the ideality 
displaying higher level of non-ideality uh, in many cases, in many applications and there exist more than two components that is the mixtures in general may be a multi-component mixture rather than simply a binary mixture. So because of that one, you know, one has to consider phase equilibrium problems and solve them while including the non-ideal phase behavior and then multi-component mixtures. So precisely if I have to explain what are we going to do in this particular course, so for that case what we are doing, what I am trying to do, I am trying to take an example of a vapor liquid equilibrium. So for a uh, case where a vapor phase and then liquid phase are in equilibrium, then the equation that describes the equilibrium composition of that uh, VLE problem is nothing but this one that is yi pi i v p is equals to xi gamma i l p i sat where yi is nothing but the composition or the mole fraction of ith species in the vapor phase and then xi is nothing but the mole fraction of the ith species in the liquid phase and then these are constant within the individual phases. In the uh, liquid phase xi is constant in the vapor phase yi is constant but they are not equal to each other. They are in equilibrium to each other but they are not equal to each other. So the difference, how much different are they from each other that defines the how easy is the transfer uh, process or that, that can be understood. If uh, difference between yi and xi value is large then it is possible that the transfer is easy or uh, the transfer of species from one phase to the other phase is easy so then separation can be done easily. If the xi and yi values are close to each other that, that means you know the separation is difficult and then the separation of species from one phase to the other phase takes place with a higher or severe uh, operating conditions only. It may be very difficult to separate. Then pi i v is nothing but the phigasti coefficient of ith component in the vapor phase, v stands for the vapor phase and this indicates, this pi i v indicates the non-ideality of the vapor phase, okay. And then it is equals to 1 for a ideal uh, vapor phase, p is the total uh, pressure of the system and then gamma i l is nothing but the activity coefficient of species i in the liquid phase. This indicates the non-ideality of the uh, you know uh, liquid mixtures that we have and then p i sat is nothing but the saturation pressure of that i th component. If we wanted to calculate x i or y i or uh, you know some of them, so that depends on the uh, you know number of intensive variables fixed that depends on the number of phases that depends on the number of components. So based on the number of phases and number of components we have to define how many minimum number of uh, intensive variables have to be fixed and then so that the remaining ones can be calculated. But before solving this problem we should know what is this pi i v information and then what is this gamma i l information. Without that we cannot solve this problem especially for non-ideal phases, especially the phases are obeying non-ideality, okay. So here the phigasti coefficient pi i v it is equals to 1 for ideal gases and then for non-ideal pure or mixture of gases this non-ideality is in general described by the several equations of state such as uh, Van der Waals equations of state. Redlich equation of state, Virial equation of state, etc. Right? Now let us say we have a pure gas and then uh, the non-ideality of that gas is described by the Van der Waals equation. Then what should be the uh, phigasti coefficient of that particular uh, component that we have to find out. Uh, now let us say we have a kind of a uh, you know multi-phase mixture and then vapor phase of that mixture is obeyed or uh, is uh, the non-ideality of the vapor phase can be uh, better explained by redlich quang equation. Then what is the pi iv, okay? Obviously it is going to be different from uh, uh, the case of Van der Waals equation because these two equations, equations of states are very different. Let us assume the vapor phase whatever is there that is that can be much better uh, described or its non-ideality can be much better way explained by the Virial equation of state. So then what is the corresponding activity coefficient that we have to calculate, okay? That those expressions we have to derive basically then we apply those uh, equations to get the required uh, pi iv information to solve these equations. Then activity coefficient gamma il 
it is also one for ideal uh, liquid mixtures, but non-ideal liquid mixtures the excess Gibbs energy equations we have to write. So, those excess Gibbs energy equations can be expressed by the different types of uh, uh, models such as Van Laar models, Margulis models, Wilson, NRTL, Uniquark models, etc. So, once we know the excess uh, Gibbs energy equations, those excess uh, Gibbs energy equations uh, can be used to get the required activity coefficient for those component of uh, non-ideal non liquid mixtures. So, so that you know those expressions we can obtain from these uh, uh, models so that we can have this gamma I L information. So, now this is how we get this uh, uh, activity coefficient and then figure uh, coefficient for a non-ideal liquid and then non-ideal uh, gas phases respectively. Okay. Once we know uh, this uh, information about the figastic coefficient and activity coefficient of uh, non-ideal uh, vapor and then liquid mixtures, those we can substitute in these equations y i pi i v p is equals to x i gamma i l p i sat and then we can solve this equation so that you know uh, we can get the uh, you know composition of this uh, multi-phase uh, you know mixtures that is the solution of such equilibrium problems for multi-component mixtures can be obtained once we have you know this pi i v gamma i l information. So, this equation we can solve only when we have a kind of a information about the pi i v and then gamma i l. So, uh, the solution of such uh, equation, so uh, that is for the VLE this equation, similarly we have the equations for LLE, VLLE and then SLE etc. Right? So, those solution part will be doing in the second part of the uh, course that is after uh, sixth week onwards. Right? Uh, but first six weeks we will be discussing some fundamentals about the uh, different equations of state and then corresponding uh, figastri coefficients and then for the liquid case uh, different excess uh, Gibbs energy equations and then obtaining corresponding activity coefficients etc. Those kind of things we will be discussing in addition to the you know uh, intermolecular potentials etc. and then uh, uh, molecular theory of corresponding states etc. Those kind of basic uh, things we will be discussing in the first 6 weeks and then uh, second 6 weeks we will be discussing how to obtain the solution of these uh, equilibrium problems. So, therefore, this course offers step by step understanding of required thermodynamic properties to handle such non-ideal multi-component equilibria cases and explore possible methods of solving problems associated with non-ideal behavior in VLE, LLE, VLLE and SLE for multi-component mixtures. That is what we are going to see in this particular course. Coming to the contents, we have 12 modules. First module would be the estimation of thermodynamic properties. Second module would be on potential energy functions and intermolecular forces. Then third module would be molecular theory of corresponding states. Likewise, sub subsequent modules like you know fourth module or fourth week onwards, we'll be discussing like gaseous mixtures and fecacities. Then fifth module, we'll be discussing virial coefficient from potential functions. Then sixth module, we'll be discussing liquid mixtures and then fecacity. Seventh module, we'll be discussing models for activity coefficients using excess Gibbs energy. 8th and 9th module we will be discussing vapor liquid equilibrium problems for non-ideal systems. 10th module we will be discussing LLE problems, 11th and 12th modules we will be discussing VLLE and SLE problems respectively. For each week we will be discussing uh, several example problems also so that we can properly understand the real essence of these equations that we are going to develop in the course. right? So, now coming to the uh, important thing that is the references. I have followed four uh, books uh, for this course. So, the first reference is Engineering and Chemical Thermodynamics by M. D. Koretsky. Second one is Molecular Thermodynamics of Fluid Phase Equilibria by Prosnitz et al. Third reference book is Chemical, Biochemical and Engineering Thermodynamics by Sandler. And fourth reference book is Introduction to Chemical Engineering Thermodynamics by Smith et al. There may be several other books also available, but these are the four important books that I will be following for preparing the 
lectures associated uh, with this particular online course advanced thermodynamics thank you